Hey guys, Rich here. It's starting to get cold out. Haven't gotten any snow yet, but it won't be too long. And last year, when I was using the snow blower on the tractor, I had uh, an issue keeping it pointed where I wanted. It's uh, actually, it's kind of loose and it tends to move um, when you're blowing snow with the force of the snow. And I wouldn't mind if the thing was like electric or hydraulic rotation either. So let's get the snow blower, bring it down to the shop, see if we can figure out how to convert it to be either electrically rotated or hydraulically rotated. By the way, quick note, um, whenever you have an implement like this, if you have any pins that are specific to it or anything like that, put it in the box and put it on the pallet with it or, or keep it with it. Put it in a bag, attach it, do something so that you don't lose those. And you don't wonder what the heck this box of pins is sitting someplace else uh, a year later. So this is the, the, the method of cranking this now. And it's not so much that I mind reaching back and cranking this. It's actually not that bad to do that. There's two problems. The biggest problem is that this moves really smoothly, and that's great. Um, it doesn't hang up anywhere. It's not floppy. Like it's not. It's not looser than it should be. Um, but uh, it moves very freely. So when you're blowing snow, you might have it set to a specific angle, but the the actual force of blowing the snow, like all that pressure of the snow pushing against this and this, will sometimes kick this guy around and cause it to to rotate a bit. Uh, that's a problem when you're trying to keep the snow off the driveway or, or whatever it is that you're clearing. Um, second problem is uh, this handle. Uh, I actually already shortened this a little bit. I cut this. I think even drilled another set of holes. Or maybe I was just able to use another set of holes after cutting this a little bit. Um, I cut it as basically as short as I could before you hit this bend here. And this still comes close to hitting. Well, it does. I can actually hit the, uh, the rops on the tractor. Um, with this if I was to come all the way up. I have my three points set with like a stop on it so that I can't go past the point that this contacts the tractor. But, uh, you know, one day that might be an issue as well. And then I guess thirdly, it'd be awesome if this thing rotated electrically with some buttons rather than me having to, you know, reach back and uh, turn this crank while I'm clearing snow. So, you can see the way this is mounted. There is a bend in... This, and then there is a piece of just, this is just painted angle iron um, with a, an extension here on one part of it uh, to bolt this up uh, to support this now. And this does come in at a bit of an angle. I don't think that angle is important to driving um, this larger gear with this pinion. I think that has more to do with a comfortable angle for the operator. A couple different ways we could attack this. Uh, first of all, Land Pride does sell a both an electric and a hydraulic kit for this thing. Uh, but number one, it's expensive. Uh, number two, it's just about impossible to get from a stock issue, at least right now. Uh, maybe when you're watching this, it's more available. But I like making stuff. I like just figuring out stuff like this and uh, you know doing it on my own. So I don't know. I've seen a couple videos online of other folks that have done this uh, and some photos. 
And I've seen where people have gotten like a roller chain that fits over this large gear and then is driven by a unit kind of bolted over here on the side. Um, the chain for this would be huge. This is, I don't have a banana for scale, but uh, you can see my fingers here. Like this, this is a, the, the teeth on this gear are absolutely huge. Um, so it'd be a really big chain to, to do that. Um, I'm thinking of actually designing and 3D printing a gear to put on a motor uh, that will interface with the teeth on this. Which in this case, the, the huge teeth here is to our advantage because particularly if we're 3D printing it, if the teeth were really small, they wouldn't have a lot of strength. But being as that they would be so big to mash up with this, I think they'll be strong enough in plastic. And plus side with that is, if something does go wrong in jams, if the gear is 3D printed plastic, well, chances are the teeth will break before anything really bad happens. So that actually kind of ends up working in our favor if we're in that sweet spot of the strength of the plastic being sufficient, but not so strong that we break something. So, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to, like we've already got this, we've already got this structure coming back here. And then it looks like there's a U shape in that orange piece. I think I could probably design a piece that bolts to that. Let me take a look online and see what is available. Okay, so I was looking online and I realized actually uh, in going through the options, it reminded me that uh, I had bought this years ago for another project that never came to fruition. Yeah, yeah, haha, I know you guys always finish your projects, right? I think this might be just what we're looking for. Um, this is electric, not hydraulic. Um, I kind of like the idea of hydraulic because I could probably operate it from the third function that I already have on my stick, but uh, I'd have to get longer hoses uh, to run back or take the hoses off the, the loader arms in the winter, which would probably be a pain, whereas electric is just, I think we could get down to where there's just one plug between a snowblower and the tractor. Maybe even the control box we don't keep permanently mounted on the tractor. So, yeah, I think, uh, well, this guy's gonna be in our way, but we probably don't need this for this application. I think this is just more to provide some, yeah, if I pull back here a little bit, you can see, I think this piece is really just to support this guy so that this is nice and firm and or if you did knock it against something it doesn't just bend these ears where they mount here this steel the orange part is i think thick enough to uh support our our gear motor this doesn't weigh much this is maybe i don't know maybe three pounds and i don't think it's going to take we see how easy this thing rotates um i don't think it's going to take a lot of force to rotate it that's what I'm leaning towards. I'm leaning towards a, let's unbolt this. And I'm thinking of a different piece of steel that hits the same bolt holes, but instead has a pattern for this. And then a 3D printed gear on here. And we'll need some way, whether maybe we do slots for these bolts so that the whole mechanism could be slid forward and backward. Yeah, I think, because we're going to need some method of controlling the mesh between the gear on this and this big gear. If we don't do it with those bolts, which conveniently would slide directly away from and towards this gear, then we would need to incorporate that into our bracket, which means we'd need a two-piece bracket or we'd need to do it with the bolt holes for this. Um which are not going to be particularly accessible because the gear is going to be on there. So yeah, I'm kind of making this up as I go. Let's get this, let's get the, the manual. The other thing I like about that is we're not modifying anything that came with this snowblower. Um, this will unbolt. I'll set this aside. I'll still have it in case this ends up not working out or something breaks right in the middle of a big storm. I could bolt this guy back on and keep going. Let's get this off.
I think that's going to work. You know what? Uh, we might be able to 3D print the, at least as a prototype, 3D print the plate as well. And then I can either get that sent off to get laser or water jet cut, or maybe the 3D printed one will just be secure enough because there's not, what I'm looking at here is there's not a whole lot of meat between the, the bolt pattern for this gear motor and the edge of that steel plate. So we wouldn't be asking a whole lot of the, the plastic to support that. I mean, it'd be better in steel, but I certainly think at least a prototype in plastic is going to work. Let me start measuring the hole patterns here and get to designing this. All right, so I know I said I was going to measure it, but what I decided to do was just get a sheet of paper and sort of make a rubbing um, slash poking through on the holes here because it's going to be a lot easier to measure this on a flat sheet of paper at my desk where I'm drawing this in SketchUp versus, uh, you know, trying to uh, just figure out what measurements I would need to take. Um, and I got the bolt pattern on the motor as well, and then what I was doing there was just marking which direction that motor comes off um, so I can get the, the actual barrel of the motor face in the right direction. So I'm going to go now, sit down at the computer and get this uh, drawn up. All right, first 3D printed part is done. And this is just to, to basically check the drawing. This is only half a millimeter thick, but half a millimeter is enough that it will be rigid enough to, uh, to test for our sizing on there. See how close we got with our paper and our guesswork. Ooh, it's pretty close. I'm um, actually too close on this end. I can't quite, these washers are in the way. I can't quite slide it far enough forward, but it's really close. All right, I made some adjustments. This is V2 and it is a perfect fit. Uh, it's interesting, the angle on this side is a little bit different than the angle on this side. Not on my uh, piece here, they're the same, but the, the actual bend on this, I guess the, whatever they, bent this on or however they formed it, it's slightly off, but no big deal. It's not going to matter. All we really need is the location of this open area here, these slots, and this hole uh, to make our piece that's going to fit over top. And the rear there also defines how close we can get to those washers. While that was printing, I took a shot at a gear. Um, I measured the one that was on here with a, a giant... Um, caliper and there and counted the teeth there's 36 teeth it does not have a standard diametric pitch of any gear that I could find I think they kind of just drew a gear shape and then had it water jet or or plasma or laser cut I took my hand at drawing one uh, as well and 3d printed it actually pretty pleased that it came out and the this should fit over the shaft on that uh, gear motor. Um, it's not the right height or anything like that, but it should be good enough to kind of hold the gear motor and see if this is going to work. It looks like looks like it's going to mesh okay. But we'll uh, we'll see. Let me get the tripod set up. Let me put this in the gear motor. Find a power supply to drive it, and uh, yeah, let's see. All right, let's see if we can get this on here. All right. I've got a, just a bench power supply here set at 13 and a half volts. Um, if you guys don't know, on a 12 volt system, while the engine's running and the alternator's providing juice, you're usually getting about 13 and a half, 13.8 volts, somewhere around there. So let's see, output on, it is, I'll switch that off.
but it looks fast. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, I, I got the the slowest gear motor that this company uh, this company had because I'm not so worried about how long it takes to cycle the chute. Um, I'm more worried about it having the torque to turn it and not pushing it real hard. Um, I guess let's go try this. All right. So this thing. Okay, it does have uh, stops on it. I thought this ripped it all the way around. This could be a problem. Um, we might have to come up with some sort of a a clutch for this or end stops. Hmm. If you think about that, uh, I don't want to tear this thing apart when we hit the when we hit the limit. But for testing, I should be able to get enough rotation here to see how it works. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a great speed. And that's eight teeth on this gear. I love to say I performed a bunch of advanced math to do that, but I kind of just guessed. Um, I was, that's 18th is about where I was with the same pitch as these for the diameter I wanted uh, for the drive on this. It's going to be down under here, just coming up higher. I'm looking at this, and the only thing that's stopping this from going all the way around is actually these two bolts. These two bolts are the mechanical end stops. I know you can't see it from here, but there's like a, a little... Uh, bracket up here in the front that these two bolts hit again. So if I go this way, this bolt's hitting right here. If I go this way, that bolt's hitting again. So if we just take these two bolts out, this thing will go all the way around in a circle. Well, I'll be. Let's try it again. So I'm still at 13.8 volts, so this would be our rotation speed while the tractor is actually running. So you're gonna hit me in the head, that'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? It's funny for you guys, not me. Let me see if I can slow this thing down and get you guys a better shot. I am, uh, I'm kind of tooting my own horn here for sure, but I can't believe how well this gear I just drew up in SketchUp actually meshes with that one. Let me get you guys a closer look. Well, I'm gonna call that a success. I think it's time that we, uh, we actually go ahead and fab up uh, a design for the piece that is going to hold that gear motor uh, in place so the gear can turn this big one. So I guess uh, back to the drawing board. All right, I think we're close. So I took this, if you recall, my version two drawing of what the uh, what the plate looks like on the snowblower, and I designed this. And if we put, so this isn't actually here on the, the snowblower, if you recall, this is just, I have to hold these two sides together. And if I put my finger here, you see these, these two holes on this side swing in the same arc as our adjustment holes on the snowblower. So this looks like it should fit. Um, since there's going to be rotational force on this with the motor, I designed this um, with some raised sections here so that this actually captures uh, not only the, doesn't not only does it align with the bolt holes, uh, these raised sections are going to capture uh, these metal shafts, or not shafts, I guess standoffs, these, yeah, these cast standoffs on the gear motor, which should help us with those rotational forces on this plate since this is plastic. Now, even though this is plastic, it's quite strong. Um, I could probably break this. Um, I'm not going to break this one since it's the only one I have. I think I could, I'm strong enough to break this, but it is quite strong. Is strong as steel? No. But I think it's strong enough for this application. I may not even have one of these cut in steel. So let's see if this guy fits. So this would be oriented this way. And it keys on the, the center shaft as well. 
And yeah, that guy fits all the way. Yeah, it's a uh, it's perfect. Got no play in it at all. Uh, according to the manufacturer of this gear motor, these are M6 bolt holes. Let me see if I have any M6 bolts. I oh, actually have some from a previous project. And I think these are stainless. I'm not 100% sure. I have to go back through my purchase history on Amazon and look, but I think these are stainless. They look like stainless. Are these actually M6? Yep. So I need fender washers uh, with an M6 center. Uh, I do have, actually these are stainless too, I think. Yeah, these are stainless, but they're not fender washers. Uh, that's all right. For the purposes of testing. I'm going to need a deeper socket, actually, for that one that's going to retain the pinion. All right. You know, I probably should have made sure this plate actually was going to work on the snowblower before we did that. But uh, let's go over and do that. Today is, of course, tomorrow. It's not the, it's all the same video for you, but I've been working on this as I have time here and there over the course of the last three days. Trying to line up the, the flats. I think we're quite going to get that in the mesh. Uh, I mean, it's it's probably in enough, probably in mesh enough to work, but it should be in further. Well, that's annoying. So if we had a smaller washer on there, if we just get rid of the washer on this one, I guess. Let me get you a better angle. See this guy here. I'll look back at my own video and see how that was when I took it apart because. The washer hits before anything else. And I mean, you can see I'm in enough mesh there that it's probably gonna work. But I'd like to get in further. Now I could modify this plate uh, to have the motor further in, but see, um, I also wanna have enough play in here so that this is adjustable for variability in machines. And see how much we have without this in here. So without this getting in the way, how much does yeah, I guess well, that is at the limit of that slot. So yeah, I'm gonna need to make an adjustment on this plate anyway to have the motor mount hole pattern a little bit further this way so that I can get to uh, basically the point where this is contacting this all the way in so that I can back it out a little bit within the adjustment range. I think for testing though, this is probably good enough. Uh, Well, that is satisfying. So what I am noticing is there is a bit of a wobble here. That's this plate flexing as the pressure changes, as each gear engages, as each tooth engages the next tooth. So this plate should be steel. I actually think plastic would probably hold up just fine. I bet you... I bet you this thing would never break. Um, but what I don't like is if this motor is moving, that tells me that the mesh angle between this gear and this gear is changing, which I don't like. And you can see we're also not quite, not quite centered there. Hey guys, I'm still messing with this thing. You know, I'm gonna beat myself up a bit because I think I can do better. 
with a design for this plate that solves some of our problems, particularly that flex. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. I did, by the way, I did just do a revision here um, a couple days ago that uh, I didn't try on here yet. This moves the, the whole pattern forward, like I said. Um, it should get us mesh and some adjustability so that this plate sits further back out like this one is rather than um, all the way in. So I'm going to try this. And I did make this one a bit thicker than this plate by, I think, two millimeters. So it should be um, probably about 20 to 30% uh, stiffer. But I thought about it, and I think I have some clearance in here to essentially adjust the, the mount as such that the motor actually sits up higher, um, which solves, it's actually, I think it's going to solve, well, it's going to solve a problem in two different ways at the same time. The distance that this this bearing is down here from where we're putting torque against this gear up here is that that distance is acting like a lever arm. The further away that is, the more the force of the gear pushing uh, each, the, the, the pinion pushing on each tooth pushes back like back like this and twisting this. So if we get this closer up on there, we're reducing that force. And additionally, we're increasing the thickness of this plate. Um, those two things combined, I think are gonna give us the strength that we need and be able to keep this piece plastic. It's not that I'm afraid to get this thing laser cut or water jet. I just like to avoid it. I like the idea of the pieces being plastic so that something gives um, if it is under really high stress. Well, and just the fact that, you know, I can solve it in plastic here today. And if anybody else is interested in one of these, um, it's fairly trivial to just produce additional ones in plastic once I've got the design down. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to go do that and I'll bring you back and let you see what I come up with. Okay. So here we are in SketchUp. This is the software I actually use to design these parts. And this is the updated version of this part. And you can see, I'll step you through, I believe I've solved all of the challenges that I had with the older version. So the key one is uh, I've added a ton of strength uh, to this part by making it significantly thicker and also solving the problem of that lever arm in the, uh, the shaft and the pinion by recessing the motor up into this plate. You can see uh, those standoffs in the motor actually sit all the way up onto these three circles right here. And from a depth perspective, you can see I'm past, well past the midpoint of this, probably not all the way to the two thirds way, but I'm well past the middle point that this actually sits on. And these recesses here actually add to the strength of this part by locking the motor from a torque perspective um, in much more tightly and actually leveraging some of the strength of the motor as well to add rigidity to, to, to this piece. Um, solve the clearance issue here on the side by uh, recessing the, uh, the mount for this bolt, um, just having it go right to the edge. Uh, so now it's got plenty of room to mesh. And then also this recesses, this design recesses the two mounting bolts so they're not sticking up. Um, and the motor mounts from the top. So you're basically just placing it in from the bottom and then three screw holes on the top. So I'm going uh, to get this printed out and uh, let's see how it looks on the tractor. And here's that updated plate on the tractor. And this one's actually been used a couple of times. I wanted to make sure that this design was gonna be good. So I have done some snow clearing with this one and it has held up really great. And you can see the risers on the motor. Um, well, you can't see them inside this because this is solid back here, but they come up into this substantially, which means the lever arm from the shaft on the motor um, headed up to this pinion is a lot less. You can see the rise on that pinion is only about maybe one and a half centimeters tops uh, before we get to the actual pinion gear itself. And if I grab a hold of this, I can flex it a little bit if I really try, but it is not like the other one where it was just kind of wobbly and I could, I could move it back and forth easily. And you see, if I actuate this, you'll notice that there is no movement at all uh, in the plate. There's no flex in the plate, I should say. <laughs> You remember before on the thinner plate of the old uh, the old design you could actually see this moving up and down here i'll give you a better camera angle so you can see that it's not moving
This also recesses the uh, these bolt holes down uh, below here, which is nice. And then this one has that step platform uh, to clearance for this guy here to give you the range on the, the mesh. Uh, the whole setup is working great at this point. Um, I'll be giving you a demo uh, of this coming up. That'll be the, the last part in this video series is actually using this guy. Uh, the one thing I would change here, or not change, the one thing I need to add is if you notice this hole here, uh, when it gets snow or, or water or whatever, it just sits down inside that cup. There's no way for it to drain out. And I can't think of a good way to add a drain without weakening this. So I think what I need to do is just design a cap, uh, just a piece uh, maybe that uh, like at a TPU, a more flexible filament, or even a, a, a tight fitting um, plastic cap uh, that, that fits in here and then has a surface that comes out here to cover this up to uh, uh, probably the, the beginning of the profile of the, the, the gear tooth. Um, in reality, with the, the way this meshes, I could even come out a little bit past to make it easy to pop that cap off with your finger, and maybe I'll do that. Um, this is the original gear that I made uh, for this plate. Hasn't worn out. Uh, it's not been used a ton. Uh, you can see wear on the gear teeth, uh, but it's just... It's, I can't even catch that with my fingernail. It looks worse on video than it is because it just changes the surface appearance, the plastic. So it makes it look like it's worn deep and it's, it's actually not. And it's weird how that, even just here looking on the, the screen of the, the, uh, the phone that I'm taking this video with, that looks like a big divot in the gear, but it's, it's not, it's an optical illusion. I don't know if we can see just by like looking down the face of it, that that's not actually material that is like worn off or dented, it's just, it changes, because this is printed in layers, it changes the surface appearance of it where it's worn, and it makes it look like it's worn more than it is. But these gears, uh, the teeth on these gears are holding up really well. So, all right guys, that's it for, uh, for this video. Um, the next one is going to be wiring this up with, uh, with controls on the ROPS uh, that work from the, from the seat. So stay tuned guys.